there are three things that I see athletes get wrong all the time when training their athleticism and explosiveness that limit their progress or make them feel like they're not meant to be good athletes. All three are super common, but number three, nobody seems to talk about. So the first one up is how we lift. There's so many benefits to strength training, but one of the main benefits that athletes get is force production. Your ability to apply force into the ground is one of the most important things for running faster and jumping higher. Simply put, in order for you to get off the ground, you have to apply force into the ground to propel yourself up into the sky or forward while sprinting. The most important part that everyone needs to focus on when lifting is the up portion. So the concentric of any lift where you're shortening the muscles and contracting the specific muscle groups that you're trying to focus on. So for an example, we're going to use the squat. The eccentric portion is lowering the bar closer to the ground and the concentric portion is going to be lowering the bar away from the ground. Now, in order for athletes to develop optimal power, you have to move the bar from the bottom position of a squat to the top position of a squat. So from the bottom of the ground to the top of the ground in 0.6 seconds. So the first most common mistake is athletes not driving the bar up as fast as possible in all their compound lifts to develop the most amount of power and force production capable. This can usually happen when athletes lift too heavy or let's just say 80% of your one rep max or above. When you get to this threshold, usually the velocity of the bar is so slow that it takes them about two to three seconds for them to even finish the lift on the concentric portion. Or it comes from the athletes just simply not focusing on driving the bar as hard as possible through triple extension. For most people whose goal is to focus on becoming more explosive or powerful, you're going to want to drive the bar up as fast as possible from a half squat or a quarter squat position because in the research it shows that the most benefits in your vertical jump and speed gains come from joint angle specificity which is simply put if you could produce a lot of force with load on your back let's say from joint angles that you would use while playing basketball or sprinting or jumping you would improve the potential of the force production being done when you actually sprint or jump and this is because you're loading up the actual angles that you produce force in while sprinting or jumping if you want to become a great sprinter i have a free workout from you from my new program that's coming out in the middle of april it's called just sprint pro it's a 12 month program if you want a free workout click right here um all you gotta do is put in your email it's completely free and then i'll send you the workout in your email and then you can get a full high quality speed workout that kind of applies all the training principles that i'm talking about in this video and further on in this video and in all my other videos i give exercises drills everything you need to become a great sprinter all in one workout and if you want the real thing later on you can go cop on just sprint obviously it's gonna be a 12 month program so it's probably gonna be one of the best programs you ever get in. next up is something you're probably very familiar with and that is just simply doing form drills or jog jogging for your warm up. Athletes will usually start the warm ups with stretching or a lot of jogging for hours that is very fatiguing on the body or they'll just do form drills that will improve their technique um, after hours of you know drilling the form, 10,000 hours some people might say. The longer you warm up, the harder it is to have quality speed and vertical jump training during your main workout. Think about timing your 40 yard dash right now, then rest for 10 minutes, go run a mile, and then time your 40 yard dash again. Which time would be faster? The first time, because after you running a mile, even if you took 10 minutes of rest, your 40 yard time is flat out going to be faster due to central fatigue on the body. But for some reason, athletes do this all the time for the warm-up they'll run two to four laps as their warm-up and then on top of that they'll add form drills to continuously work on their technique right before they do their explosive training work which is their high quality sprints or high quality jumps like i said in a previous video high quality sprints and jump work is going to be the most important factor to improving your athleticism but you have to be a hundred percent fresh not 99 percent 110% fresh to actually get the gains from. So yes, the second biggest mistake is not doing coordinative work as your warm up. Most people will do their conditioning as their warm up first and then do the slow form drills. And now they're beat up and tired for their explosive work. We're just gonna start off with the form drills or the high coordinated work that will challenge your nervous system to turn it on. So like you've seen in the thumbnail, doing regular A skips probably is not gonna do a lot for you, but doing things like resisted A skips or A skips after a 20 meter buildup sprint or A skips over a hurdle is very challenging and provides a great stimulus to your brain to actually leave a long lasting improvement on your technique. And like I said before, this should be your warm up. This will allow you to warm up your body, turn on your brain and central nervous system and improve your technique without having to 
think about how to sprint correctly or jump correctly conscious. Because remember, you cannot be fast and you cannot react when you are thinking. And then finally, blending this idea of minimizing fatigue and improving efficiency in your workouts, which is something I preach all the time. Then you see all these local high school track and football coaches doing all this conditioning and explosive work and you wonder why they're trash. What you see all the time is the athlete will do a sprint racing someone or by themselves and then wait 10 seconds just to do another sprint again and then just repeat that 10 to 20 times until somebody throws up that is your average high school workout someone misses a free throw and then all of a sudden they have 10 laps and you wonder why your athletes are super unathletic i will say i do not recommend this for any type of athlete i don't see the benefits in mental toughness it doesn't improve your conditioning and all it will do is hurt your athleticism and hurt the athlete long term and short term and that is because doing aerobic slow twitch conditioning work workouts is not going to help anybody develop power or fast twitch muscle fibers. And because these workouts are so low in rest, it ends up being low in force output, which increases slow twitch fibers. And this will only provide more slow twitch fibers as the workout continues to goes on, and it will end up developing a unathletic but conditioned athlete versus a unconditioned athlete but a freak on the court. So the question is, what should you do instead? For every high intensity sprint that is under 50 meters, you should wait two minutes for every 10 meters that you travel so if you do a 20 meter sprint you should be sitting and resting for four minutes this also applies for max effort jumps if you do a set of repeat jumps or a max effort maybe dunk you should be waiting maybe 30 seconds to a minute or usually two to four minutes for optimal recovery which will help you stay explosive throughout the workout and get more reps in which overall will help develop more fast switch fibers and power and if you're going above 50 to 60 meters this doesn't apply anymore you're not really training the anaerobic threshold you're only doing stuff that's above six seconds which in the research shows that is aerobic if it is above six seconds in total time sprinting so the only thing you're really training is like speed endurance you're not actually training raw speed these are very foundational aspects of training that most athletes mess up and need to fix today but if you are still struggling to train like an elite athlete go watch this video right here or you can go click the link right here to join my athletic newsletter